project in Premiere Pro, it may appear rather daunting. It takes a while to load the program and you'll come up with this window here. You're going to select New Project. And this is kind of key. You've got a lot of pull-down menus here. But what I'd like you to do is title your file with the name. And then, very importantly, you're going to need to choose the correct location to save this. Otherwise, you will not be able to access this file. It will probably get lost or erased, etc. So your instructor will tell you where to save it. In this case, I'll be saving it to the Seacove Dropbox, which is sometimes in different locations on different computers. But eventually you'll find it. And once you do, you can save it to the location that you want. And uh, it can be inside another folder. Typically, I'll put it inside one of these. So I'll put this in there. It'll create a Premiere Pro profile. I haven't done anything yet. You do not need to worry about any of these pull downs here. Click OK. And that'll open up your Premiere Pro application, which has some similar buttons to Photoshop. I'm just going to do a quick overview of this. This is your media window, and this is where you will bring in your files. So that could be audio files or video files. This is your timeline. And your timeline is where you drag clips to get a visual interpretation of where they're going to go and how long they are, etc. We've got your sequence panel here and your source panel. Your source shows you whatever you've clicked on down here, and this shows you them together. And, and we'll get into that. It'll make sense very clearly. If, you, if yours doesn't look like this, uh, you have these options of different styles of editing bays. So typically for filming, I choose editing, and that's the one that I choose. Now to import media, you can either drag a folder in here, and that's what I would suggest doing. So if you go to Finder, you can you should be able to find the folder of photos that you've taken that you will be creating a clip out of. So here I'm going to actually steal some from another student because I don't have any here. But if I go into this person's, I can see that there's stop motion photos here and I can see all these JPEGs. And it's very, very simple for me to just drag this folder over here. That'll import. And now I can see in that folder, I've got all these images. If you want to be hyper organized, what you can do is you can create a new, they call it a bin, but it's realistically it's a folder. You can create a new folder in here for all your video images and another folder for all your audio images. Now right now I've just got all these I can't click and drag this folder in. Or can I? Actually I might be able to. Let's take a look here. Yes, I can. So you can see that what it's done is each one of these lines in here, and I can zoom in or zoom out by using this, is each frame of the movie. This up here is my playhead. This is so this essentially wherever it falls down will show what frame is being displayed. Now each one of these frames is a picture right now. It hasn't joined together. And I can select one and you'll see what will happen is it'll play that one image there. Uh, what I'd like to do though is I'd like to collect all these still images together and create them into a clip. But the first thing you need to do is you need to select all those images. You can either click and drag around them or you can hit Command A to select them all. Then you're going to right click on top of them. And what you're going to do is you're going to click Speed and Duration. And currently each one of these still images is being displayed for 4 seconds and 29 frames. You're going to change that to read five frames. There's 30 frames in a second, so that means that there will be uh, 30 frames per second divided by the duration of this single image is five frames, so that means that this will be one-sixth of a second in duration. 
incredibly important, you absolutely must click Ripple Edit. That means that because you're shortening this clip hugely, it'll get much smaller. You want to shift over the subsequent file so it plays right after it without a big gap in there. So we click OK, and now you'll see that really shortened up the duration of this. But there's still multiple files. Now if I want to make a clip out of this, if I want to change this from 30 odd single files, again I can select all of them by going Command A, and if I right click I can nest. So nesting is essentially creating a clip or a movie sequence out of a bunch of still images. So here's my still image uh, nested clip or sequence and now you can see it will play fairly properly. Again, I can now change the speed and duration of this if I wish. And you'll also notice in this, I can also, notice how it gives me a chance to speed up or slow down this. Uh, I can also reverse the speed. That will play this in reverse. So this is very handy. And so right now, this is probably a great time to go to File and to save this file. But this is a good starting point for your production. And you can make these windows bigger or smaller. If you want to confirm where it's being saved, you can click on Save As, and that will show you where it's being saved. And so it's being called Sample, and if I want to confirm that I'm saving it into my folder, I just need to follow the breadcrumb through to make sure that's happening. And so I can save it right here. It's probably in production and filming already. So it'll ask me, do I want to save over? Yes, that's fine. I can replace it. And we're all good.